All right, setting up recording. Right now, so today's live Zoom cooking with Chef Broussard. We're gonna be making our um, ramen stir fry. So I've got everything all set up here, all my mise en place done. Um, so I'm gonna walk you guys through the recipe. We're gonna get it cooked and then I will open this up afterwards for extra questions and stuff. But if you do have a question, just unmute your mic and ask me as we're going through, okay? So don't be shy. Um, you can also type them into uh, the chat box too, okay? So make sure you put your tenants in there as well. So first thing I wanna talk about today with the ramen is I just use regular packaged ramen, right? Flavor doesn't matter, all right? Cause you're not using the little seasoning packets, okay? So take those, throw them in the trash. Um, you can save them to use for something else later if you want, that's fine. So what I did before you guys came on here today is I cooked the noodles, okay? So I cooked two packages of the ramen and I put them in the boiling water only for about a minute and a half, okay? And then I just rinsed them with some cold water to stop them from cooking. So I don't want them fully cooked, about halfway. Enough so that the blocks break apart, right? But I want this to soak in, instead of just water, the sauce that we're gonna be making with this today, okay? So what I also did is when I drained it, I saved some of the pasta water, right? So this is the water that I cooked the ramen in. So I'm saving that in case I need to send the sauce later, right? So that's a good little trick for um, thinning out pasta sauces if it gets too thick, okay? So save a little bit of your pasta water. So the first part we're gonna do today is the sauce, right? So I've got the ramen cooked, it's cooled down. I rinsed it, like I said, with cold water to stop it from getting overcooked. I'm gonna make the sauce, chop up some veggies with you, and then we're gonna get everything in the pan, okay? Um, when you look at the recipe, this is off of um, spendwithpennies.com, okay, and the link is in your assignment sheet, so if you want to make this at home, if you're not making it with me now. So for this, it calls for a quarter cup of hoisin sauce to start off with, and the water. I already have the water in the measuring cup. I'm going to put the sauce right in here. So instead of putting it in a separate dish, why dirty extra dishes, right? Um, that way I can mix it in here, and it's going to be easy to pour into my pan that way too, right? So I'm using... Um, Joyce Chen's hoisin sauce. If you don't have this at home, you can substitute um, oyster sauce. You can put in a little sweet chili sauce, teriyaki sauce, even just a little bit of molasses and add a little bit more spice, okay? Um, you just need something to make your sauce. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add in a quarter of a cup into that. So I'm just gonna make sure that my measuring cup here goes up to a half a cup. And you'll see that it's a nice thick sauce, right? Slightly sweet. They like said definitely could sub out oyster sauce or teriyaki. I like hoisin sauce for this. Um, and I also use this a lot on barbecue. So if you grill up a piece of chicken or some pork, put some hoisin sauce on it right at the last you know, minute that it's cooking, it'll give it a really nice glaze, okay? So I've got those two going there. Then I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of soy sauce. I'm not using low sodium, because that's all I have is regular, okay? Just can't go in. Um, so you can use either one. So if you gotta watch your sodium level, you can go with low sodium, okay? So a tablespoon of soy sauce, use there, okay? And then we've got one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, all right? I don't have anything smaller. So. Try to make sure you've got a nice level measurement. Now with cornstarch, right, this is what's gonna make my sauce nice and thick. The trick with cornstarch is that you have to mix it into a liquid that's cold. If I just took and I sprinkled this cornstarch into the saute pan later, it would lump up and not do its thing properly. So always dissolve it in a little cold water or cold sauce before it goes in to your hot dish, okay? So we've got that there. Then a half a teaspoon of sesame oil. Now sesame oil is pretty strong. It's not like an olive oil or anything like that. So small amount is all you need. It gives it a really nice nutty flavor. Okay. And then I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper, right? So these are things that you might put on your pizza, right? Um, now the dish is a quarter teaspoon. If you like it spicy, add extra, okay? And it calls for salt and black pepper on this recipe. So I'm just gonna put pepper in first and then I'm gonna taste it. Because I didn't use a couple of good pinches of black pepper, I didn't use the low sodium soy sauce, so I'm gonna taste it first. And then if I think it needs more salt, I'll add a pinch. Most likely it won't. No, it's fine. 
okay? Sesame oil gives it a really nice flavor. So I'm gonna let that sit, let that crushed red pepper spice soak in there, right? And just kind of set that off to the side. So the next part of this is the veggies, right? So for the veggies I've got today, I've got some snow peas, some cabbage, carrots, some colored peppers here. I'll tip my screen down so you can see me chopping in a second. So the snow peas, right, here. So it's four cups of any veggie. So this is actually four cup measure, right? So I'm gonna go up to here, full of veggies. Um, this is a great way to use what's left over in your fridge, right? So if you got a random carrot, um, you've got some leeks, you've got whatever you happen to have, um, throw it in there, okay? So I'm gonna start off with snow peas, just showing you this, because I've already got some in there. When you're looking at these, after you wash them, you're gonna see there's a little stem tail there, right? You grab that, peel it, okay? That's really chewy and fibrous on the top, so take that off, okay? You don't want that piece of there, all right? I'm just gonna do these last few. I did the rest of them ahead of time, just to save us some time today, okay? And don't worry, I'm not throwing things on my floor. I have a trash can there, all right? And then I'm gonna do some cabbage. So I've got a head of green cabbage here that I'm going to cut and shred it up. So I'm gonna tip this down a little bit better so you can see a little better, right? So it's not a big one. I did want purple cabbage. They didn't have it this week at the store. So, you know, work with what you got, okay? So I'm gonna cut right down through the center core of this already peeled off the outside layers. Now, when you're cutting through something heavy like this, right, that's hard, right, keep your hand on the top of the blade, okay? Cut through that core. Now, I'm gonna cut through the core this way as well. So I'm gonna lay this down flat, right, safety first, and slice down through it, okay? Now, to get that core out of the way, just do a little side chop, right? About a 45 degree angle, right? takes the core out. And then now I can shred this up. So I want some nice big long shreds to go in with my noodles, right? So remember when you're doing stuff with your knives, right? Three fingers wrap around the handle, thumb up here on the blade, the other finger gets tucked to the side, okay? This hand, your claw, right? Like the claw machine. And chop up all my cabbage, right? Nice thin slices, so take your time with that, right? And the key to stir fries in any kind of Asian cuisine is to get this stuff done ahead of time, right? So I'm just gonna set my cabbage over to the side. It's about a cup, so a little bit more. So I can show you that again, right? So I'm cutting that at an angle, just so I can get those core pieces off, okay? That's good for composting if you've got a garden. Shave it down. I like cabbage. Um, it's a good filler for a dish. And then the other half of the cabbage that I have, I can then use um, with my carrots that I have in the fridge to make coleslaw, right? And then all I need is a little mayonnaise and vinegar and a little mustard, and I got coleslaw for barbecue uh, this weekend, right? So next thing, carrots, right? Let me just get rid of my crumbs here. So it's good to have a little trash bowl on your table in your workstation or have the trash can close by so you can just toss things in, right? Um, carrot, it's already been washed. I'm just going to give it a quick peel, right? You can scrub it really good and not have to peel it. That's fine. Just want to make sure you get off any pesticides or anything that may be on the outside surface, okay? So same thing that can also get composted. Now I'm gonna grate the carrot to this. So easiest thing to do is I'm just gonna trim off the ends. All right, so just trim those sides. And then I'm gonna use my little grater. So you may have a box style grater. I have this little handy one here, um, which makes it nice for putting over the top. Just give it a nice little grate. And the reason I'm grating the carrots is that I want this to cook fast, right? Stir fries, you want them cooking quickly, right? So if I had big, huge chunks of carrots in there, it's gonna take forever to break down, okay? So instead, see how easy that is, right? It's gonna give it some nice colors. So I tried to pick some stuff with some pretty colors, right? Oranges and greens and reds today. cat box there, making sure that you're marking yourselves here, right? 
And be careful when you're using a grater too, when you get down near the end, okay? Um, my meme used to call these knuckle scrapers, right? For reading. So you know, if you start getting down too far, just uh, that's gonna be good enough for now. Okay, so now I've already got my snow peas, I've got my carrots going, right? Um, I'm gonna add into this some canned bean sprouts, right? Nothing fancy, something you might already have in your shelf. Right? Like I said, I wanna end up with four cups of veggies total plus my cup of cabbage, right? So this is a definite good healthy dish, lots of vegetables to it, okay? And then the last thing I'm gonna do is some peppers. So I got some of these, right? Um, grocery store, had them on sale this week. Um, $2.99 for a big bag full of them. So these are great for um, snacking on, using for dips and things like that. So I'm gonna use these little peppers here to uh, give some extra color, right? And it'll give a little bit of sweetness too. So with your peppers, I'm just gonna slice these right down the middle. Right, I'm gonna come in and pull out my seeds. You can use one big pepper if that's what you've got, right? All you got is a green pepper. Color doesn't matter. Okay. Slice them off. So I got two red, because the reds were a little small, but I wanna get kind of an equal amount of color in there. So just pop out those little seeds. They come right out. Like I said, these are great for just snacking just as is. Give them a quick rinse. It's a healthy snack for all my nutrition people out there. All right, so now I'm just gonna slice these up, okay? So I like to do them a little bit of an angle. So I want some nice long strips. So if they're short peppers, you can make them a little bit longer, right? So nice thin slices, okay? Because remember I said, you wanna keep everything about the same size and thickness so that it cooks the same amount of time. Okay, let me just trim off that stem now. Like I said, if you've got any questions, just unmute your mic and ask, okay? Don't be shy. But make sure you're marking yourselves in the attendance box so I know who's here. A little busy at the moment. You wanna make sure you have a nice, good, sharp knife for this stuff too, right? Makes cutting a lot easier. Now I've got all my peppers, right? Got some nice color there, right? So we'll have our green, we'll have a white, right? Some red, orange, some yellow, okay? Um, so at this point, you know, I pretty much have everything prepped that I'm gonna need, right? I've got all of my ingredients laid out, right? I've got my sauce here, ready to go. I've got my noodles that are par cooked, and I've got my veggies. So what I'm gonna do is turn on my stove back here, nice and high on the burner, and I'm using a nonstick pan um, for easy cleanup, but you can also use a wok pan, um, stainless steel pan, things like that. But we wanna get this to a nice high heat, so it's gonna take it a second to do that, right? And it says a couple teaspoons of oil, so one, two, there you go. Um, I don't really measure oil when I'm doing stuff in the pan, right? Give it a couple of swirls, yeah, you put it down. <laughs> nice try. Yes, my cat's weird, he loves cabbage. So he will try to come up here and steal cabbage. Um, so I just use an olive oil. This is one that I brought back um, from Italy. But you can use vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever you've got in the cabinet, right? I don't want you running out to the stores um, to buy things, okay? So while that pan's heating up, right? If it gets too hot, I can always move it to the side. I wanna chop up my garlic, okay? Cause that's the last thing that goes in. But I'm gonna keep them separate from the other vegetables, right? So remember that we've done this in class, garlic in the past, right? You take your cloves, the fist, boom. That one went flying. Okay, and then you can just pop off the peels, and then I'm gonna chop these up nice and small, okay? I always cut on, trim off that little stem in there, right? Because it tends to be a little bit dry and tough, okay? And then chop through it. So run your knife through, 
Um, you know, get the garlic as fine as you want. You can add extra garlic if you want more, right? A real big garlic fan. Um, you can always add an extra clove. All right. It doesn't have to be super fine. You just want a nice rough chop to it, all right? Put this in a little dish here. So I got my two cloves of garlic, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of fresh ginger in this. So I've got some ginger root here. If you can't find it, that's okay. You can leave it out. It's not that big a deal. So I'm gonna break off a piece of ginger, and then I need to peel it. So to peel it, I'm just gonna use my little teaspoon here, right? And just hold it so that you're scraping it, right? So put the spoon down towards the ginger, right? And this way you don't lose all your ginger. If I tried to get in there with a vegetable peeler, there's all these little nooks and crannies that I can't get to, okay? And I only need about a half a teaspoon. I don't need to peel the whole thing, but I am gonna trim off that dry spot, right? So if you have a spot that's really dry, just come in there and peel that off, okay? And then I'm just using my little microplaner here today. Keeping an eye on my pan back there behind me. Um, you can also do this with uh, the box grater too, right? Just use the smaller size. And I love fresh ginger and stir fries, marinade, marinades, things for the grill, right? Um, and ginger is great if you haven't been feeling so hot, you know, maybe eating a little bit too much junk food, right? You can see I got my fresh ginger in there. Um, ginger is good for digestion in your stomach. Right, so if you've got an upset stomach, that's why you drink things like ginger ale. Okay, so my oil sizzling over here. Right, so my pan's nice and hot and smoky. Okay, so in go the veggies. And that's what you want to hear, that sizzle, right? I'm gonna come down on my heat a little bit now. This burner is my high heat burner, so it gets really hot. So, good pair of tongs when you're at the stove, right? You want to kind of let that saute for a couple of minutes, do its thing, right? I'm going to add my cabbage in. You can see it's a lot of vegetables, right? That's why you want a good size saute pan. Why is you hearing that sizzling going? You know, it's still doing its thing, okay? Um, the next part is this. After I take, I'm going to cook these most of the way through. I'm going to add the garlic and ginger in after. And I didn't add it in right away because garlic can tend to burn if you do it too quickly. So this way here, right, I'll add it in. It'll have a chance to soften up and give off its flavors, but it won't end up burnt. So if it ends up burnt, it's going to make your dish taste bitter. Beautiful. You can see all those pretty colors coming, right? All that red, and green, orange, yellow. Are there any questions? I saw your message about Caitlin. <laughs> You start to see, you'll start to know when it's doing its thing that it's coming up, right? Because that cabbage, it starts off as a lot, but it's going to cook its way down, right? So everything's going to start to shrink down a little bit. Right? You want that cabbage to get nice and wilted. But you don't need to overcook the veggies either, right? All the things that I picked because they're small and fast. They will cook quickly, right? You'll see that I'm using my purple tongs. I know, shocking, right? Purple. Um, and yes, there's an actual reason for that, right? One, I love the color purple. And two, that these have a silicone coating on it that's high heat, so it can use it in a saute pan, but it also won't scratch up your good nonstick pans, right? So if you're doing stuff with your nonstick pans, um, 
take and be careful if you're using metal tongs that you're not scraping and things as you go. Okay. There we go, right? See that? Cooking down, doing the thing. I said, it doesn't sound like a very big, you know, recipe when it's only calling for two packages of ramen, but the size of this could definitely feed, you know, well, some of you guys, two people, uh, <laughs> some of the big kids, but you know, it could feed three, four people easily. You know, you could just add extra veggies or add an extra pack of noodles in to bulk it up for the size of your family. Okay. So I'm going to add in my garlic and ginger now. All right. Sprinkle that throughout. And that's just going to give us a lot of really nice flavor, right? Already smelling good. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is Chef's lunch today, too, by the way. So. I've been hungry for a while, so. I don't like overcooking my veggies too much. You can cook them as much as your family likes, whatever they're going to actually eat. That's fine. I'm trying to speed this up a little bit too at the time for you guys. Um, give your sauce a little quick stir, right? And yes, my whisk is also purple. Pour that into the pan. Right. Now, the key also with corn starch, like I said, you have to mix that with cold liquid. But the other part of that is, is that it has to come up to a boil in order for it to actually work as a thickening agent, okay? So, it's got to be hot enough in your pan so that it thickens up, right? Which it did perfectly. Nice hot pan. Sauce going in. Right? Now I'm going to add in my noodles, right? So I want to let that finish cooking in with all this wonderful flavor. Okay. If they get the noodles get a little sticky, let them heat back up for a couple of seconds, right? Put some of your hot veggies and sauce over the top. And they'll loosen right up, right? So we want to mix in all those really good flavors. If you don't like eating ramen noodles long, break the bricks apart into smaller chunks, that's fine. All right. All right. Let that sit for a moment here. Remember, clean as you go, right? A little bit on the easier side. Got a minute just to do its thing. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take that off my hot burner so I don't want it to burn. I don't want to keep cooking, overcooking it, right? A nice pair of tongs. So a nice portion here. I can give you guys a quick close up of this. Do a chefing it up thing. So, if you're taking pictures of your work, right? Clean towel. Okay. I want to get a little bit of red on top there for my picture. here so you guys can see it okay and there's still plenty in the pan right this is gonna feed i'm gonna be eating this for a couple of days um you know you can do it with some chopsticks you're feeling confident in that so you guys practiced a couple weeks ago right but there's your dish okay i'll take a close-up shot of that and i'll put it on with the video after so let me stop our recording <laughs>